You know, I bet that the scientists down on the planet are looking up, like, at their monitors and stuff, and they're seeing our awesome probe just kind of floating around, and they see that the maneuver they make is going to be just almost perfect, uh, and I bet you, I bet you, that they uh, they almost lose it. They, they know that right now, this is going to be the most important thing they've ever done because you got to remember right as, as we flip around to our maneuver note here they haven't ever taken pictures of the moon up close uh they've looked at it from the planet but their rate of technology progression is different because they have different motives uh you know for us as a as a human race our more exploratory I guess motives would allow us to decide, okay, well, we want to take pictures of all this stuff that we see in the sky first. We built giant telescopes on the ground, and then we finally made satellites that did it. And for the most part, uh, we... How, how long am I going to have to burn? Probably for like a minute. But for the most part, as, as humans, we, we took a safer route. These Kerbals are so, I guess, intent on exploring their system that they, you know, really are for the first time seeing the moon up close at this mission. They're going to fly by it with a probe, and the probe will get a lot of data and bring it back, and then they're going to be ready to send a mission to the moon. Like, they they haven't really explored their own system as far as photographs are concerned. They've just kind of looked at it in the sky as, you know, with, with low-power telescopes, not like the, the massive... Uh, ones that we're going to make here in the future, right? We do have a mod installed that will allow us to make awesome, you know, like Hubble telescopes, and we plan on doing that before we explore other planets. But for the moon specifically, you know, it's low priority. All right, so what we're going to do here is as soon as this engine runs out, which it will, there we go, we launch that. What a beautiful opening. We make sure that this is all done correctly. It is. And then we continue our burn. Fuel is gonna be tight, but you know, when isn't it in Kerbal? It typically is uh, very tight. I mean, we should have plenty to adjust our maneuver back. We just need to get close enough to the moon here that we can gather our science. And there, that'll be perfect. That's even better than the last one because this is a uh, while it puts us on a weird angle, we still come back, um, we still get within a an orbit around Kerbin, which is probably the best thing that we could potentially do. But yeah, there, I mean, you gotta remember there, the whole idea behind the Kerbals is that, uh, generally speaking at least, their technology progression has been different. I mean, they, they haven't even really made high-power aircraft yet. They've explored most of their planet using land-based vehicles, which is why the, the Kerbals have such weird... Uh, you know, spaceships when they go into space and they're designed funky is because they only know the basics of aerodynamics. They know lift and drag, and that's really about it, which means it's, it's on their list of things to do is to create aircraft to explore their planet further, which will allow them, you know, especially when creating uh, giant space shuttles and stuff to to be able to see from space their, their, uh, their planet more thoroughly. Okay, so... That's some easy science right there. Now, remember, we have these two things. We want to save those for the moon. Um, it looks like we're going to be at 580. We could adjust that. We have a lot of fuel left. We could adjust that to the point where we go into low moon orbit, which means we can collect two sets of science there, which is what I think we're going to do. Um, because this is an unmanned craft, we actually don't have anybody to take crew reports, but we're going to have to do that when we send a manned mission up. So for the time being, um, I think we're just going to have to kind of get close to it. So let's do that now that, because we have like a huge orbit around Kerbin, which is why we took some science there because, uh, you know, it's basically free science. Okay. So what happened? Okay, we're, we're in the path of the moon, correct? It's kind of hard to tell. No, there's the moon. Okay, this got really funky really quickly. 
Am I... Okay, I'm in orbit around the moon? Or am I in orbit around... You know what's a good way to find out? Is if we click on this. And... High over Kerbin. Okay. We're gonna reset that. I bet our Kerbal scientists are quite confused with this whole thing. Like, what, what exactly is happening? So... Let's see if we can adjust this any. So something strange has definitely happened. I've, I've adjusted the thing, but it's going to throw us out into space. Um, so we're going to have to come up with some clever ways of fixing this. The first thing we need to do is not crash into the moon. So we need to uh, set up a maneuver, probably prograde, just until we get to... Well, we want to be a little higher than that. How about like 20? That'll be good. Um, just under 20. How about that? Just so we really assure that we get low moon orbit. Um, I'm sped up, so I can't adjust anything. So let's do that. Let's find our maneuver node. Which is right there. Cool. And then we'll... I mean, we only need to burn 54 meters a second. All right, let's try it. This is a... Uh, I, I would say that the Kerbal engineers back on Kerbin are, are you know it's a little tiny bit of winging it you know they're making it up as they go but it's not necessarily that bad right they're good enough for this they have confidence that they would not lose their space probe in space uh, you know at least there's no Kerbal there but they wouldn't really care that much would they so about there that'll be perfect all right, let's let's do two things. The first thing we're going to do is start collecting science while we while we have time, because it may get a little hectic towards the end. So we're going to collect that seventy five science, which is brilliant. We're going to collect this one, which will give us another thirty. Uh, I think we'll double collect here. No, we'll we'll double collect a low for the those, and then we'll collect that one. Okay, so what is going to happen is we're going to quick save just in case. And we're going to speed up time just until we're quite close to the moon. We're going to be cutting it real close here. Uh, as you could probably tell. So we're at 120,000 meters. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Ah, and the moon starts popping in all of its textures right here. But we do get a good view of, of Kerbin back there. It's really quite cool. It's very majestic. Just a little further... Now that we're under 20, we should be able to collect that goo. Uh, yeah, while in space near the moon. So we'll take that. Uh, we'll take that. That might be the same stuff that we're collecting. It's hard to tell. But we're just going to collect it anyways for safekeeping. I don't really know what low moon science is. So what I'm going to do here is not speed up. That would be a terrible idea. We're actually going to slow down, which will turn our markers kind of back around. We could do that where we're, we're creating an orbit, but we don't necessarily want it that much. So a little bit more out. And how far away is that? That's really far away, but we should have plenty of time to be able to correct that so quick save just because you never know what'll happen and we're just going to actually go ahead and start burning now and we're going to get that happening now these Kerbal engineers I'll tell you what if they pull this off they're going to get a little confident here which may not necessarily be the best thing ever let's get that exact and then um, we're going to quick save again we're going to get out of this. Going real slow around the moon. That's fine. And what we actually want to do is to come out of this. So we're on here. Which will give us a better idea of how to actually correct this. So probably should slow down enough. Uh, 200 meters a second. It's going to be hard to hit. But we should be able to do it. 400 meters a second. This is going to be close, actually. How about... A little bit more. We do want a periapsis. 
22. That'll work. Um, before I do anything, I gotta save that. Okay, this might go terribly, so we're gonna find out here. Um, we have to do this burn that we're actually gonna start now. We're not gonna wait a minute for it. It's 500 meters a second. That may burn up the rest of our fuel before we can get the maneuver done. It's important that we get into the atmosphere. If we can get an atmospheric pass, you know, like below 60,000 uh, meters, what that will do is it'll allow us to slow down in the atmosphere. It may take a couple rounds. We may go around the planet a few times, but uh, it would slow us down enough eventually to come in. Which I've done before. It's, you know, it's not necessarily the most difficult thing ever. It just takes a lot of time. And we're getting a lot of encounters with the moon here. Ooh, we may just perfectly get our... Is that coming in on the planet? It's hard to tell. We're gonna we're gonna not burn the rest of our fuel. We have barely any left. Which should get us the rest of the way. But what I wanna do here is get out of the the sphere of influence of the moon. Because that'll give me a better idea what this is gonna do. Okay, so let's get rid of that. We're currently coming right onto the planet at a pretty sharp angle, might I add. So let's flip retro or not retrograde, but prograde. And we're going to burn the rest of our fuel out. And that's it. That's all we got. That's all she wrote. And we're coming in at a lot better of an angle now. Okay, so. What have we done there? Well, we have enough. I think we collected all this. Yeah, okay. We collected all those. We collected both of these. And what we do now, because we're totally done with this engine. This engine will come in in the planet. Uh, without us, it'll do its own burn. That shouldn't have affected its trajectory much by launching it out that direction. So, I'm going to face retrograde. It's not going to be what retrograde is by the time we get back to the planet, because the planet is right... What is that? Oh, that's our engine. <laughs> Where the heck is curb? Oh, there it is. Okay. This can be interesting, so let's quick save, and let's speed up to coming in. Now, from this angle, it looks like, oh man, perfect, perfect entry from that angle, right? But when you look at it like this, you're like, ooh, well, at least we might, no, we're definitely coming in over water. That's fine. I, I put legs on it, but at the same time, I'm kind of, I would be happy to come in over water. Also, I want to fix that city texture. It doesn't look quite right. And we're totally not facing retrograde anymore. So let's do that. Of course, that'll change as we come in a little closer. But, ah, there's our beautiful blue planet. Now that we're coming in kind of closer to the planet, it's going to keep us from speeding up too much. But right there. Cool. All right, let's try not to lose any parts. That would be the first thing. We're going to burn that in the atmosphere first before we launch our chutes. But our chutes are going to be quite important to this to slow us down. Um... I've had issues before with this middle section breaking apart, but I don't think we're going to have that issue today. Because we have so many parachutes on it, it should slow us down before we even get to the point where that's going to be... Although we are coming in really hot. I'm going to have to be very careful with my chute deployment. I kind of want to do it roughly at about a thousand meters per second. I mean, we have 16,000 meters before we hit the ocean. We're coming in real fast. And about right. Let it keep going just a little bit more. Now. And that'll slow us down enough. Ah, oh, that was perfect. You couldn't have asked for anything more beautiful than that. Our probe. Our probe has come home. And our Kerbals need to send boats to go get this thing. Because it's going to be definitely in the water. I turned SAS off and it looks stable enough. I think we placed the parachutes correctly this time. They're not super low so it's flipping it around. And, oh, we, we did ever forget to turn on our lights in space. Oh, I forgot to do that. Because we had the green lights on the bottom and the red lights on top. Oh, I forgot to do that. I'm so sorry. Next time, we'll need the lights because we'll have definitely a Kerbal going up to the moon. So let's speed this process up. Waiting for a perfect chute deployment. Love it. These parachutes have done a fantastic job of slowing us down. I mean, we have enough of them to do it, but, we're, I mean, we're only coming in at three meters a second. 
I don't even need to deploy the legs because once again we're coming in over water. But I think uh, I think if I were deploying on the land, it would be a thing of beauty. And it didn't break apart. That's good. Recover vessel. How much science did we get from this? How how much information? Ooh, we got 213. We gained 192 from the mission itself. That will give us exactly what we need for the next part, which is gonna be brilliant. Oh, by the way, I think we completed a contract. Which one was it? Uh, transmit or recover scientific data from space around the moon. Perfect. That's, I love that, that's brilliant. Plant flag on the moon, we're gonna accept that. Uh, we're not gonna rescue that poor Gerbil yet. We want to explore Minmus, we'll take that. Uh, scientific data from space around the moon, we'll take that. Okay, cool. Thank you.